thing I wanted to talk about was, and I don't really want to talk about it because it's, you know, like I put I put this player at Bernadeschi class and now, I don't know, I've got to eat my words, I think, but Chiesa has just been, you know, sensational for Juventus. Look, I, 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 I agree with you. I put him in the Bernadeschi class. Um, I didn't... I, I heard a lot of hype around him when he played for Fiorentina. To be honest, I didn't see any of that. Um, the only time I really watched Fiorentina last season was when they played Inter. Um, but then I watched the it- Italy fixtures and I didn't see anything from him. But this season, I feel Juventus's loss of Dybala um, to injury... Um, McKinney coming from America, um, Artur um, coming from Barcelona, has really forced each and every midfielder in that Juventus squad to play their best or get dropped. It's as simple as that because they've got such a solid midfield that you don't play well, well, guess what? You're coming off and McKinney's coming in. Or you're coming off, the Bala's coming in, or Kiesa's coming in. And I just feel... He's elevated his game, um, especially from the start of the season, to something phenomenal. And the the most promising thing I see with Chiesa is not what he does in the um, Zebra's jersey. Not what he does for Juventus, but what he does for the Azzurri. Um, that's what's really exciting me because... If you look at the Azuri squad at the moment, you've got Bastoni, Donnarumma, um, you've got Barella, you've got Chiesa, Zaniolo, Mois Kane, potentially Sensi. This is a team that could go for, you know, three World Cups, right? This is a team that could be the 2010 Spain. Right, 2008, 2010, 2012, Spain. Right, and that's what makes me happy about seeing Kiesa play the way he's playing. Now, I don't know what you think. Yeah, well, you know, Kiesa almost he debuted and he was sensational. And then I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the pressure got to him, the um, the and and everything, and he almost dropped the level. At, at Fiorentina, I, I, I'd say it was probably the pressure, you know, because he had Simeone there and, and and yeah, the, they they had a good thing happening and then they didn't and very inconsistent. So he did show the quality, but then he didn't. He, he, was, he was terrible for me. But for me, there's him who is actually, for me, he's a starter now in the national team. But there's one other position that, for me, I've done a, a complete, you know, 180, 360, whatever it is. Uh, Mancini actually gave Lazari a go at, you know, right back for for the Azzurri. And the other options are virtually Mancini for Roma. And I think Mancini has pretty much proved that he's just he's just not ready. He's very inconsistent. Um, and and I thought that Lazari was like a shoe in you know, like. I thought that once he got his go, that's it. But I, I must say, I'm very surprised with Damian. I, I think that he's been he's been a surprise for me because I mean I, I saw this play. I, I was never happy with him when he played for Italy. Absolutely never happy. I just I just didn't see what everyone else saw. He went to Manchester United and he was dreadful. He was barely playing. He's gone back to Inter and all of a sudden. You know, the guy's got a good haircut. Um, uh, look, when it comes to Damien, when we signed Lukaku, Inter agreed a handshake agreement with Manchester United and Parma that Damian would be in Inter play. Yeah. And then I completely forgot about this. And then the false positive of Hakimi's COVID test comes in and Damien makes his debut. And I said this to you there and then. Everyone said Hakimi was Inter's saviour, but that that false positive was the best possible thing that happened to Inter this season because Damian came, right? He came and 
he's he's dominated the both wing backs, not just the right and the left. Yep. Like he's dominated both sides, and I feel the like I just feel this player has matured so much. And you know what? I I feel he would without any bias would be probably one of the best signings this season solely based on performance as an individual, right? He pushes up and attacks, but he drops back and defends like a champion. And I think when you've got a player that that peaked so young and then done, done very poorly for a very long time, I think he appreciates what he's getting when he gets it at his later age. And I, I feel that, that he's just a workhorse. He doesn't stop. He, he continually contributes to the team. Like you said, his versatility left and right. I, I, I really think, because we haven't had an international game for a long time, and as much as I love Lazari for Lazio, and, and I think that, that he's the man for Italy, Lazari, because of his pace. He's got brilliant pace. But I really think on the technical side of things, I think that Damian he definitely has to be in that squad because, like you said, left back, right back. He, yeah, and you know what? He's um, he's thirty one years old, so he's not old, but he's not young. And yep. um, and like you said, he he had so much hype around him, and when he went to United, I just feel that killed his career. Um, yep. and, and it shot at that. And when we signed him, I said to you, I don't know what we're doing here. I haven't no, seen this guy play forever. Um, and he had that spell at Parma where he didn't do much. But no. then, um, he, yeah, I just feel, I don't know, like, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like a biased supporter, but you hear a lot of um, Inter players say, Contes changed my approach. Contes changed my game. Contes changed this. And you look at Bastoni, you look at, I can't say Barella because he was great before he came to Inter. Maybe he's been improved. But even Lukaku's come out and said, Conti's shown me how to be a better striker and stuff like that. And I don't know if you put it to Conti or you just put it to this guy is, I, I put him in the same category for Italy as Gattuso. Not a fantastic player technically in the sense of, you know, he's scoring goals left, right and centre. But he's that greedy player that has that grinta in him that you know, you don't want to face. Look, I see, I see Damian as a, 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 almost like a Kondreva, like an Italian international that Conti's got the best out of. And, and I don't know if it's a, a, an Italian thing. Um, all the other players are, you know, I'm not too fussed about because it doesn't really relate. I guess Lukaku doesn't, you know, he's a Belgian player, so I don't particularly care. But, you know, like we've, um, Lukaku uh, with um, Damian as an Italian international player I think he's going to add to a team that is very mixed with youth and experience and I think that he's sort of right in the middle where because like you said 31 is a perfect age and for me I, I think he's going to be a valued squad member in that team, and I think he's got a lot. I think he really does have a lot to offer. I think Inter need to use him more because well, um, I I feel if fully fit, Inter may potentially have three of the four potential back line for the Italian squad with um, Bastoni there. Um, if he if he keeps going the way he's going, you can't not give the guy a start. D'Ambrosio is phenomenal on his day. And then you've got um, Damian, who can play both sides. But I feel value added, Damian's probably the man to go with. And Yeah, well, I think think Bastoni, definitely. And I'd rather take D'Ambrosio out and put Damian in. Because they're both predominantly right side. But when you have have Lazary on the right... um, yeah, the, the the national team is going to be very, very strong if you... And that's what Lazio is doing right now. We have Marisic, who is a right-side winger playing left, and we have Lulic, who's a left-hand side coming back from injury, and we have Lazari playing on the right. So so Marisic can virtually play both sides. So it's 
Lazio can be very, very versatile because if you play like Damian, you know, then you can you can judge what you want to do. You, you can keep him there. You can swap him. You know, like you can do whatever you can do. Like generally, when you got your free subs, you like to play change your wing backs. You know what I mean? Or your strikers. You don't want to disrupt the center of the midfield. So with a player like Damian, you don't even have to take him off. If he's on the right, you can switch him to the left. Yeah. And you can bring – so you can actually change the game by almost making two subs in one. Because yeah, well, you've seen it. So, you've seen it happen so frequently with Inter at the moment. He'll be, um, he'll be on the right, and then um, Hakimi will get subbed on for Ashley Young, and Damian will switch to the left. And yeah, and that side – and 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 it just it, like you said in in a three substitute world, um, that's yeah. what you see more of, and that it's that like is worth, yeah, that's that's worth uh, that's worth its weight in gold. But yeah, um, is there anything else we got to cover, or we pretty much covered everything in this hour long episode? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's um, I actually there's one thing, there was one more thing is um, I think that. Italy has been blessed this season with leading goal scorers. We yes. have we have the best players, like the best names. You know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Romelu Lukaku, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Chiro Immobile. You know, like Chiro is massively underrated at Serie A. You know, he's won the go- he's won the leading goal scorer three times. And then you have the legends, you know, the absolute legends with 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 Ibra and, and Ronaldo, and then the all time top goal scorer in um, and, and a record record Inter first season goal scorer in Lukaku as well. Yeah. Like so, I feel, I think that Italy have the best strikers, and and they they're almost going toe for toe too. Like it, it somehow worked out where. Zlatan haven't, hasn't really played, but he's still pretty much up there. And and you got, you know, Lukaku, Chiro, and and Ronaldo, virtually three goals apart or something like well, that. Had, but, um, so Ronaldo's on 15 with Lukaku on 14, Immobile on 13, and Ibra on 12. But if you take into account all the penalties missed, Ibra would be on 18 or something like that. He's been horrendous in front on the spot. So... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so, look, I, I feel um, it, it's it's a testament to how Italian soccer's evolved as well, um, how Italian football's evolved into this high goal-scoring fest um, non-stop, basically, all the time. You know, you go back to the Invincibles of um, Juventus, and it was score a goal in 10 minutes, and then they defend for 80 minutes, and then they win 1-0, they win 1-0, they win 1-0, they win 1-0, they win 2-1, they win 1-0, you know, and I just think um, they've picked up a lot from Spain, they've picked up a lot from the Premier League, they've picked up a lot from all over the world, and, you know, these signings, these players, you know, they're not in their prime. Ronaldo's not in his prime. Zlatan's not in his prime. And they're still performing amazingly. And we're just well, blessed to see them. But I think when you say they're not in their prime, I, I think that these guys have actually evolved into not the box-to-box player anymore, but but the, the finishing product. So they, they generally... I don't know. Ebra was all over the pitch against Inter when we played. Um, he was up and down, but... You know what, I'm glad you used the word evolved because I feel these players have evolved into not just goal scorers but mentors on the pitch. And sometimes you can do, um, and and I used this example today actually um, with a friend of mine, Van Dijk for Liverpool. He might not score a million goals, but the value he adds on the pitch as a mentor and as a leader you can clearly see what's happened to Liverpool since he copped his injury. And I feel that these players, although they might not be scoring these bicycle kicks and scoring week in and week out multiple goals, 
they're adding so much more value training with these players and being on that pitch with them. Yeah, well, I believe, I think last year, Chiro had nine assists. You know, yeah. like nine assists is, is a lot of assists, particularly for a leading goal scorer. That they're generally supposed to be very selfish. So, um, you know, these players are adding a lot to these teams in value. And, you know, like just just the fact that Lukaku gives away a penalty, Chiro gives away a penalty. Um, Ronaldo never gives away a penalty because he's Ronaldo. And and you wouldn't expect him to, you know, because he's, he's that kind of person. But he demands respect from everybody, you know. And, and, and Ibra is just such an experienced journeyman that, you know, this Milan team on, on paper, they're, they're nobodies. No one heard of these players. And you got to believe that it is Latan that is, is assistant coach there and, and help running the show, and, and they're learning a lot from him. And, you know, the league is, you know, if you've got some new followers, then I'm sure they're loving it, you know. But as a, as a player that's, as a fan that's been watching it all, all my life, you know, we went through that period where we didn't have these players, you know, and it was a little bit lackluster. And all of a sudden, Napoli came out and started playing nice football. But but now you've got most teams, you know, like coming out and, and – even with Juventus now, with Pirlo there, they're actually playing a better brand of football, you know? Like, so it's yeah, actually... It's entertaining. It's yeah, entertaining. I, 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 think it, I think the league is, is very entertaining. I think it's arguably the best league in the world. And I think that we probably have the, the, better, the better players consistently through most of these teams. You yeah. know, because even the lower teams, even the lower teams are getting stronger and and yeah i you know i I'm, I'm a big fan of a lot of these coaches italiano uh you reach for uh, verona as well you know like i i think that a lot of teams have got the right coach and these coaches are bringing out so many different qualities in teams yeah and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this season probably more than i've enjoyed like you know a season probably in, in the last 10 years and you know, last season, last year were on top a little bit better than what they are now, but I'm still enjoying the season for what it is because no one has dominated. Absolutely no one has dominated. And I think it comes down, you know, it comes down to having a competitive league. You know, not a not a two-team competition. You know, the, the the league this season has been has been very, very competitive. And that that's why as as a neutral, right? I'll be up tomorrow morning messaging you. Uh, with this, I'll be uh, up. Don't worry. I'll be up. But um, to everyone else, um, I hope you enjoy the podcast. If, if you like it, um, click the like button. Subscribe on YouTube. And uh, have a good day, guys.